Hi there. Today I want to talk about vaping. Well, not vaping, but what people do with their vapes when they've finished with them. It seems that a lot get thrown by the roadside, dumped as it were, rather than being recycled or taken back to the vape shop, I assume you can do. I'm quite lucky to me never to get hooked on to nicotine wouldn't pay out money for cigarettes seemed a th well not a sensible thing to do so I was lucky and never got involved feel sorry for those people that have but uh, must cost them mega books to keep going and these things are an environmental disaster as far as I'm concerned. They contain lithium cells. Okay, lithium cells are brilliant apart from they won't send them through the post anymore. So my supply of cells from China has dried up. But now I've found this valuable new resource. These things. They have all sorts of different sizes of cells in them. So as I'm walking round, if I see one discarded, I do the environmentally th correct thing and pick it up. Otherwise it might be picked up by some child who might do something silly with it or something even sillier than I do with it. They are very dangerous. You see videos on TV, on YouTube, maybe TV, of these things going up in flames. So they're not to be handled roughly or without thinking. As they come and come out of their vape, they have a chip usually inside them. Can't find a chip. Where's a chip? Must be one somewhere. One there. They've got lots of these because I've been experimenting on them. Here we have one. This device then has a chip inside it which protects these cells. So the cells need protecting because they mustn't go below a certain voltage, say 3 volts. It's dangerous if they go below something like 2.93 volts. So inside here is a chip which will control that and stop it from happening. However, once we've taken these away and removed that chip, then we have no protection and they are dangerous. So what can we do about it? Well, I have a couple of ways of achieving safety. One is to use these things. don't know if you can see them. These are protection chips for cells. These are very good for 18650s or for these particular ones that are found in the cells which are very good and they seem to work well. They're supposed to be 1500 milliamp hours but hey if I can get a thousand milliamp hours out of them I think that's brilliant. So what I do is to solder one of these devices don't know if we've got one there. Don't think I've got one on that one. Anyway, I sold the one on the end and that then hopefully makes it safe. Another way of doing it, of course, is with these type of uh, protectors. These are a lot smaller than the uh, these round ones. These do a four amps, I think it is. Whereas these little tiny ones are limited to something like two amps. So it depends what you want to do as to which type to put on. The thin narrow ones, here's one on a normal cell that I purchased. 
uh, just goes one end of the metal goes on to one end of the cell and the other goes on to the other end making sure we get the polar polarity polarity the right way around so they are marked for positive and negative and we need to make sure we get that right then when we've done that we can have the wires coming off i use these plugs and it then has a dual purpose we can use this plug to charge it or to take the current out so yeah once they've got one of these on and wrapped in this uh, tape which is clear tape which is supposed i think to be heat proof then i think they're safe you'll find this tape on most of the cells that we get here for example is one which shouldn't be used it's aluminium casing has been broken away i think it was run over or something like that so that is highly dangerous and wants disposing of without being used they come in various sizes as i say so we have some like this which i believe come out of this sort of thing the flat sort of one i've only got 289 milliamp hours i've measured on this particular one might be better if i recharge it and then discharge it again uh, what should it be can we see it gives it in what hours there but essentially that i would think is is what well 1.8 divided by 4 or 16 divided by 4 would sort of give us 400 would it milliamp hours but i've only got 200 and well 90 out of it might get better with charging and more use this one for example can give us well as i say i've got a thousand milliamp hours out of that but it should be 1500 this particular one here then uh can't read what i've got out of it 13 would have thought it was more than 13 uh, but it has no protection on it at the moment so it's a very nice one is it 513 milliamp hours without protection so i need to solder something on usually at the end uh, we can solder on on this particular one i couldn't get to solder it because the solder tabs are usually fastened on uh, riveted on to the piece that comes out from the cell where are we there comes out from the cell has a piece of material that we can solder onto but the bit that comes out of the cell we can't so what i've done in this particular case where the bit from the cell that i could solder to is broken off instead of soldering i've just used a bit of a two-part epoxy to fasten the wire on and i've been lucky it seems to work so what can we do with these cells once we've protected them and used them well one device i had that uh, upset me the other day was this it's a torch but i had nicad cells in it three nicad cells or three nicad well to make a battery and then on the inside it has a little carrier which should come out easily there we are that comes out now it had the three as i say well a a triple a batteries i think it was in there so all i've done is to carve it out put one of these cells out of a one of these into it and that then goes into my battery into my torch and replaces the three nicad cells the nicads of course dis self discharge that is after a month they've lost quite a lot of their charge and as i only use my torch infrequently then after uh, probably a couple of months come to it and then it doesn't work 
So by putting that in there, hopefully, my lithium cells will... Oops, ooh, didn't like that. Oh, it's all right. Uh, very bright, very nice torch. So with that, hopefully it can do it. Don't just have to use single things. We've got here one of my Lego controllers. Problem was, if I can open it, it took six C-type cells, which cost mega bucks. And if left in there, once again, they tend to corrode and discharge themselves and then we end up with corroded terminals hopefully by using two of these cells out of the vapes uh, it will work reasonably well or it does work reasonably well and to do it all I've done is to cut two lumps of wood put a drawing pin in one end for the negative so that pushes against the negative terminal and at the other end I've put a screw onto it where there so that pushes against the positive terminal and I've just connected from the positive to my first lithium cell and then from the negative of this lithium cell I've gone to the positive of this lithium cell and then from that cell, it goes back into the negative of the controller. So that saves me a lot of brass in C cells. And also means I can use my controller to control motors with. Looks like I've got one here. So let's try it. Oops, we've got a screw loose. Oh, of course, it'll stick to the magnet, sticks to the magnet on the motor. So if we put our motor there, switch on, uh, and then we press one way, it goes one way, press the other way, it goes the other way, and I can write programs and use it to program up to three motors. So yeah, I'm quite happy and chuffed that I've managed to find these vapes. I think it's bad that people leave them lying around and they are a toxic hazard. But it's good for me, so I can replen replenish my stock of lithium cells without them going through the post. That's brilliant. Anyway, it's bye for now. Bye. But it would be if the camera would turn off.